the movie opens with a terrifying scene of a woman drenched in blood. She is swinging herself with the help of a chain while sobbing. Moments later, she pulls herself up and commits the unthinkable. As she breathes her last, a strange device falls out of her hand. The movie then shifts to a woman named Ella Patel, who is seen attending her friend Sean's baby shower. However, she seems to be unable to find her place within the circle of friends, as everyone is talking about pregnancy and babies. Gross. Ella is a local celebrity architect who has been happily married to Aiden Patel for 10 years. Despite being in her late 30s, Ella does not want to have any children, as she does not want to go through the tough stages of pregnancy. While at the party, her friends ask her when she is going to have children, to which Ella says that she is very happy with her current life. Hearing this, her friends wonder how one can be happy without children. At home, Aiden wants to raise their family as well, but despite this, he is supportive of Ella's decision because he does not want to force her like everyone else does. One day, on the urging of her husband, Ella visits a doctor named Dr. Weber to get tested for breast cancer. This is because her mother died at the same age because of it. It is supposed to be just a regular checkup, but the doctor seems a little too concerned about Ella's decision to not conceive. She suggests that Ella's biological clock is unlike most women, and that with the right medication and treatment, her opinion about childbirth might change. The doctor then talks about a clinic, which is testing out a new hormone drug intended to fix the biological clock of women. She asks if Ella wants to give it a try, but the latter declines, citing her busy schedule. Nevertheless, Dr. Weber provides her with her contact information, asking Ella to reach out if she has a change of heart. Later that evening, Aiden and Ella are visited by her father Joseph for dinner. While dining, Joseph brings up the subject of pregnancy. Everyone in this world is obsessed with pregnancy, much to Ella's already mounting frustration. Indirectly, he expresses his desire for a grandchild to carry on their lineage. He further pressures her, pointing out that she's a Jewish descendant of Holocaust survivors. Apart from her friends and father's pressure, Ella's social media is also filled up with pregnancy-related content and pictures of babies. All these factors lead Ella to feel that she is letting everyone down and fears that there is something wrong with her. At midnight, while engrossed in her office project, Ella recalls her doctor's suggestion of an experimental clinical approach that can fix her hormonal imbalance. After contemplating it for a while, she decides to give it a try, though she refrains from informing her husband due to the uncertainty about its potential success. The next day, Ella departs from home, feigning the need to carry out some office work for a few days. However, once she drives away, she contacts her boss and explains her inability to continue with the ongoing project, even though it was her dream job. Following this, she drives to the referred clinic and checks in, where she notices the infinity symbol placed in different spots around the facility. A short while later, she is approached by Dr. Simmons, who gives her a brief lowdown about the experimental drug that they have created to assist the women like Ella. Ella's first session begins the very following day, during which Dr. Simmons learns about her tocophobia, an intense fear of bong rips, I mean pregnancy. She then tries out a sort of Rorschach test on Ella, where she places a few cards in front of her and asks her what she sees. Ella sees three things, a figure of a tall woman, a pile of bugs, and a grandfather clock. Soon, the doctor sets up a treatment plan for her and also provides her with some medicine. In the next therapy session, Ella and the doctor discuss the symbolism behind the three things that she saw earlier. Ella explains that the cluster of spiders or bugs signifies the trauma her family endured during the Holocaust, where the Jewish people were exterminated like bugs. Similarly, Ella interprets the grandfather clock as her family's only heirloom from before the Holocaust, and she perceives it as her grandfather's coffin. This represents the pressure she feels to carry on her family line. After closely considering Ella's insights, Dr. Simmons theorizes that both the bug and the grandfather clock probably stem from Ella's fear since the Jewish Holocaust, which was basically about well-cultured people killing each other. And now, Ella fears bringing a child into a world that is almost the same. The doctor then inquires about the tall woman, but Ella has no idea about that one. That's just a big-ass lady. Following the session, Dr. Simmons proposes that Ella consider implanting a small device inside of her so that she can become pregnant. She explains that the device, in addition to the pills, will permanently remain inside of her and release additional hormones required in order to help with the pregnancy. Ella isn't sure about it and decides to take some time to think. Back in her room, Ella begins to experience unsettling occurrences. At first, she notices a spider on her bed, but it mysteriously vanishes as she tries to kill it, indicating that it's a hallucination. Secondly, the incessant tick talk of the room's clock disturbs her. She attempts to turn it off, but the clock continues to tick. Unable to bear it, she runs outside and meets with a fellow patient, who offers her a cigarette. While they talk, the woman reveals that it's her final night at the facility, and she is feeling like being graduated. After a brief conversation, the woman says goodbye and departs. As soon as she leaves the area, Ella suddenly notices the tall
tall woman, prompting her to rush back to her room. Fearing her surroundings, she calls her husband, whose voice helps her to calm down. The following day, Ella undergoes the next stage of treatment. It involves entering a huge tank as part of a desensitization procedure intended to address any psychological barriers related to pregnancy. Upon getting inside the tank, Ella sees some gruesome imagery of childbirth, which deeply unsettles her and prompts her to scream in agony. Urgently, she pleads to be released from the tank. Shortly after, the tank opens, revealing the same tall woman before her. Filled with panic, Ella attempts to flee, but slips in the process and sustains a minor injury to her forehead, rendering her unconscious. After a while, she regains her consciousness and finds Dr. Simmons by her side. Ella inquires about the tall woman, but the doctor asserts that the woman was a clinic nurse. Despite Dr. Simmons providing video evidence from both inside and outside the tank, Ella remains unconvinced. She expresses a desire to return home, but Dr. Simmons insists that Ella's choice was voluntary, so she must stick to it or else their work would be in vain. On the final day of the session, Ella is inserted with the device and is asked not to have intercourse for at least three weeks. Oh, what the hell's that got to do with the duck? Having completed the session, Ella drives back home, but the unsettling visions keep on haunting her. She sees the scary tall woman on the road, which freaks her out, even though that jump scare device has been overused already at this point. After a while of driving, Ella finally returns home, but she doesn't appear to be the same person as before. Aiden notices this change and inquires about it, but Ella just pretends to be tired due to the long drive. Apart from all this, Ella develops an unexpected craving for eggs, and she gulps them down without any hesitation, even more than Gaston. As the days pass by, Ella's health starts to deteriorate, and she often gets hallucinations. The scene then changes to her birthday, and we see Ella and Aiden host a gathering with friends including Sean. Since Ella is a great architect, Sean wants her to install a beautiful nursery in her room for her upcoming baby. Stop talking about babies, you NPC, says Ella. During the birthday celebration, Ella continuously stares at Sean's pregnant belly and asks for permission to touch it. When the latter agrees, she places her head against the belly, surprising everyone. This impresses everyone, as Ella is interacting with a baby for the very first time in her life. But then, something very weird happens. Ella hallucinates a large spider on Sean's belly, and as a result, she asks her to stay still. Ella then grabs a book and almost hits her friend's pregnant belly, but she is soon stopped by another friend and Aiden, preventing the potential harm. In the following scene, Ella heads to the hardware store to purchase paints for her friend's nursery installation. During her time there, she struggles to distinguish between different colors, indicating that she is going colorblind. Just then, she receives a call from Dr. Simmons, who inquires if she is having any side effects. Despite all the ongoing mental disturbances, Ella falsely claims that everything is alright. After the call, she proceeds to Sean's place to start her work. Sadly, she is unable to focus as the persistent hallucinations and distressing tank video continue to plague her thoughts. Later in the evening, Ella and Aiden pay a visit to Ella's father, and together they go through old family pictures. At this very moment, they stumble upon a hidden picture of Ella's grandmother, who happens to be the same tall woman she keeps having visions of. Here we learn that Ella's fear comes from generational trauma, and she doesn't wish to pass it on. Ella, who is really disturbed by the picture, as well as the ticking sound of the grandfather clock, decides to leave. Upon arriving home, she realizes that she left her pills at Sean's place. Despite the late hour, she rushes to retrieve them. This is when Sean discovers that Ella has ruined her room by painting horrific figures on it. Just then, her water breaks, and she goes into labor. Ella becomes so fascinated by this that she sweeps the water from the floor and smears it on her face. Oh yes, gooey. She then tries to force Sean to give birth right Right now, but this act ultimately leads her to getting thrown out of the house. After a while, Ella receives a call from her father, who says that he has fallen down. She rushes to his house to help him, only to be triggered by the ticking of the grandfather clock. Unable to tolerate it any longer, she grabs some tools and destroys the clock. Two weeks have passed since the therapy session, and Ella's desire to have a baby suddenly intensifies. She confides her wish to Aiden, and the couple decides to have intercourse right away. However, as they proceed, the implanted device within Ella gets in the way and inadvertently injures Aiden. Oh, my cock! Causing bleeding. When Ella rushes to get some gauze from Aiden's bag, she notices the Infinity logo of the facility on it. Here, we get to know that Aiden knew about the clinic the entire time and that he purposefully nudged Dr. Weber to suggest it to his wife. When confronted, Aiden admits that he just wanted her to have a baby by her choice. Furious by the betrayal, Ella drives to the facility and directly confronts Dr. Simmons. She demands the immediate removal of the implanted device. However, 
the doctor responds that the device isn't meant to be removed and that doing so might lead to permanent infertility. Hearing this, Ella begins to panic. Hysterically, Simmons attempts to pacify her, but Ella soon realizes that the entire procedure is nothing but a grand delusion, just like the visions of her grandmother. She claims that her process is doing nothing but forcing women into feeling a certain way, a way in which society wants them to feel, but not allowing them to be who they are. With this realization, Ella rips out the implant on her own. As she does so, she regains her normalcy because the colors, which have been absent from her vision, reappear. She finally feels that she has become the same person as she was. Not long after, the police arrive at the facility looking for her, but she drives away immediately. Soon, Aiden calls her and reveals that he was the one who called the police because of what she has done at her father's place. This is when Ella retraces the moment that she was destroying the grandfather clock. In reality, because of the influence of the drugs, she actually killed her father instead of the clock. In her defense, it's an easy mistake to make. Devastated by this harsh reality, Ella pulls over on the side of a cliff road. She exits her vehicle and surrenders herself to the police. The cops handcuff her and are about to escort her away, but Ella suddenly makes a run and jumps off the cliff in a final tragic act. The scene at the start of the movie also depicts a woman who had been implanted with the same device. Her life was destroyed by the hallucinations, so she ended it all just like Ella. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.